What's good, YouTube? And welcome to the house. It turns out people are hot for Sensei, but Dolce's have a new teacher card, and this allows them to combo off like the good old days. And it's even seen some success at the regional level, which we featured on the channel. Now, my opinion on this... The buyouts are ridiculous. I think the people who are fans of Medolce's already have the cards for Medolce, so it's kind of a scramble. Maybe the people who gave up on Medolce's after Brilliant Fusion and sold their stuff because it got multiple buyouts, it went pretty high for what it was, maybe they're the ones clamoring back for it. But I think the lack of sales that we'll see, as it was 50 the other day, it's already 40 today, we'll see it continue to go on down. Last I knew this was a $22 card, I... I guess I missed the point where it held the market price at 29 but I think we'll see it continue to trickle on back down as people really want to make sales and actually sell their ridiculously priced cards just because there's no reprints. Now, Chase, it is a fan favorite. It is a waifu deck. It is that sort of thing. Yes, we're that community. I'm so proud of this community. But uh, we do see all the prices still stably high. You're looking for near mint copies. It's going to be a hard time. But look at this. Ultimate Rare Pudding says, remember how many buyouts this got? Oh, look, it's only $10 for the Unlims. Oh, yeah, it's not first rarity. What a pleb. But seriously, if you're looking for this deck, yeah, it's expensive. And I wonder if Konami has on its mind Battles of Legend for this stuff, especially with the newer reprints. Konami usually is sharp with those kinds of things. We've seen multiple buyouts on this. They do actually pay a little bit of attention to the secondary market, so... Let me know if you think this could appear in uh, Hero's Revenge or maybe a couple of Medolce cards. I know uh, some of the newer cards are not in max rarity, so it'll be interesting to see if they get attention in either the Mega Tens or in Battles of Legend. Then Gearsu is actually going up even a little bit more over here on TCG Player. The gap has widened, no material, solidly under uh, 30 here at 29. We've got Ghost Sister, 28, and then Gearsu at 34, although on eBay, you can still find these near mint at $32, but it does somewhat quickly rise. My opinion on this is I'm still floored and shocked that an ultra rare is a top, but this is what short printing does. This is a direct example. Yes, Dengirsu is probably the most useful card in the set, but it speaks that this rarity can climb. Now, are we looking at Circuit Break 2.0, where Spiral Double Helix was the most expensive for a while, and we'll see a secret rare jump towards 60? I could easily see this because every single secret rare is actually insane and we're going to be waiting a long time for reprints. So what would your pick be for the card that's going to find its place throughout the next year in a format? I think hand traps are very viable for that and no material I think is starting to get a little underestimated. I do think it was overhyped at first, but at this point... It's starting to feel underestimated. Do remember, though, for investing or going hard on the set, the special editions are to come, so maybe back on off. Now, I do have a couple of suggestions. Called by the Grave. It's getting its reprint upcoming. We're in the WCQ season, so copies are running out, despite how many prices are listed. I would be selling mine now. We know it's going to get some kind of uh, printing in the Megatons. It's one of the card's names, so probably Prismatic Secret Rare. Maybe not the easiest thing to get, but historically, having that secret in every single, you know, pack... I think we'll be seeing plenty of Call by the Graves pulled. I think we'll see this price go down, especially if the Super Rare is no longer the highest rarity, which, Konami, please don't reprint a Super Super. Don't do that again. Just, just, just stop. I'm pretty sure Konami has Prismatic Secret on the mind for this card, though, and a lot of people wanting cards like Red Reboot and Prismatic Secret. We'll see what they cook up, uh, what Konami has for the Megatons, but this is for sure in there. I know a lot of you guys love having multiple decks. You don't like, you know, moving your cards from one deck to another. Sell your extra copies now. It's so free. This is going to fall probably towards $2, if not lower. Get your five freaking dollars for your common card right now if you have extras. Now, of course, keep your play set for the WCQ. Uh, you're probably going to end up citing this or using it. But again, if you don't see this as an option or you got extras... Take the free money. Similarly, I don't think a ton of people are running around with extra Nightmare Phoenixes, but this has gone all the way up towards almost a solid 5 as well. Get rid of your extra copies. I don't think many people have a ton, but again, I know a lot of you guys 
may have extra decks. Like, and not just the extra deck where Nightmare Phoenix goes. But, like, you play with multiple decks and you have the extra deck made for a lot of those. I think Nightmare Phoenix will be on Konami's reprint list for the tens. I think it's pretty safe to say uh, that they would think something so heavily in the meta would end up in their Mega Tens. So start getting rid of extra stuff like this as Mega Ten season comes. But while we're in National slash WCQ season, you're going to get the max. Now, talking about investing, you're telling us what to get rid of, John. What should I get? I think Beat Cop is heavily underestimated here, and it's already towards 220. It's been slowly going up, but I would go ahead and get mine sooner than later and maybe get a little page in the binder of these. A, she is a waifu card, as we've seen at the beginning of Market Watch, but B, she's a good generic downward two arrows that also does have a tribute effect. And I've, I've actually, in uh, Thunder Dragons, used this tribute effect in order to recur Darkest Diablosis. It's not always how you want to go with it, but it's interesting that you have that connection to Darkest, and in the future, you could see yourself using this perhaps in other decks to also trigger him, kind of how Ray ended up triggering him before, and then you continue on. I, I think this is a really cute interaction. I think it's a good card. It's generic. Uh, of course, there will become better generic cards in the future, mayhaps, but for going up through the Guard Dragon engine, into your triple burst this is a pretty good card that gives you a pretty good arrow in the guard dragon engine as well and it only has its printing here so i think we'll see this you know as the guard dragon engine continues to interact with the meta go up for that as well oh we got d d evil heroes the people are talking about destiny hero evil hero mixes and stuff this card's insane i didn't get to do a video on it yet so i'm just gonna interject it in market watch since it's relevant evil hero a duster gold is a level 4 2100 slash 800 you can only use the first effect once per turn you can discard this card to add a dark fusion or one card that specifically lists dark fusion in its text from your deck to your hand except uh, evil hero a duster gold so they basically made this perfect piece of support that really puts the deck on another level and dark calling list that evil fusion in its name or uh dark fusion my bad so it lists dark fusion by name in its text and we all know dark calling is pretty much the better version allowing you to recur the resources after using them for link summoning and that sort of thing oh yeah being able to search dark calling seems pretty good and the market agrees but i think since they have this text so specifically we'll see a reprint of dark calling i don't think it will be left behind so i wouldn't be clamoring for these but it could be a common in the set so rares could be the higher rarity just as i stated the ultra rare would get bought out which it did because it's the higher rarity and it's unlikely for it to get surpassed in a duelist pack actually i think that's impossible to get past <laughs> the ultra rare is the highest in there right so we we see dark fusion as well over here will it get a super rare print who knows if it'll even appear super in that pack since it's such a few focus on the evil heroes but uh having this be the top rarity pretty much for sure yeah it's it's gonna have it's kind of a day and price and we see over here on ebay the only near mint copy at 20 uh again my opinion on this is eh uh, the the ultra rares make sense collectors will enjoy it but i would think just like the modolches thing that i'm talking about if you were a true fan of the deck you'd already have it if you you know you're cosplaying you, yeah you should have had it but i i think it's just kind of that mad market scramble and for the last part of market watch i'm gonna talk your least favorite thing for many of you merch Ami Ami still has up for sale the uh, Artworks Monster Blue Eyes White Dragon Complete figure. Now, I'm not a fan of the price point versus the size of this figure, but historically, every single bit of Blue Eyes merch has doubled to tripled in price. I was very tempted to get... Oh, pre-orders are closed. Yikes. Uh, I just saw this, which usually means it's life. So, um, we're here at the end of Market Watch. There's no redos. I don't get to do a retake. This is surprising. It was open the other day, and uh, they release in June. Many places are sold out, and I <laughs> wanted to use this as an example of something to get as a last chance, but it's sold out pretty much everywhere, and I guess some people canceled on pre-orders, and there were a couple. Yikes. But another point is the Proplica Dual Disc, which is like 
retail, I think, 220 or 250 over in Japan, sold out on Big Bad Toy Store for 340. The community is so thirsty for higher end merch that they spend a lot to get these kinds of things. And to see this sell out on Big Bad Toy Store is pretty shocking. So if you don't know why this is gonna be so hard to get, first off, it's from Bandai Direct. So only certain stores are gonna be getting these in or having orders for them. Second off, uh, Bandai does not ship to the US. So you would have to use a ship to a forwarding center in Japan and then ship to us. This is extremely hard to get and seeing it sell out at the 340 point in pre-sales from a big store like Big Bad Toy Store is insane. So if you listened to me before, it's looking even better to have ordered this figure. I thought about going for three of these. I was even thinking about it after this market watch, but I'm saving up for a car. I'm saving up for a trip to Japan. I'm gonna go with the one. I'm not happy with the size of this being a foot tall at the wingspan is kind of a yikes and you can see it versus a figma yeah okay it's it's kind of cool but for 170 the size just doesn't justify it but i think looking at Yu-Gi-Oh merch in general and how this is selling out and how it's going to stay sold out and not get rewaves because bandai premium bandai usually doesn't do that with things like proplicas I think we're also going to see this going up in price over time. But let me know what you guys think of the Yu-Gi-Oh! merch market and how starved it is for high quality stuff. To see stuff like this sell out on every site, pre-orders close. See this sell out on a site like Big Bad Toy Store and uh, on eBay. You know, we see, uh, what is this, like towards 350 before 420 being the only pre-orders? We'll see how the fallout is once the product actually comes out, which might be your last chance to get these for a decent price before they just skyrocket out of control. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And remember, I do have a P.O. box down below and a Patreon if you want to support in other ways. Again, thank you so much for watching.